What if half of the GCPD turned against Batman? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today, we're going to be covering Batman Eternal Part 2, covered in issues 8 through 14. The gang war is raging, and to make matters worse, certain members of the GCPD are currently working against Batman. But there are select members that are working with Batman. If you want to show that you support the GCPD, Batman, and Comic Storian, then go check out our sponsors, jackofalltradeclothing.com. They have this shirt right now on sale, 50% off, if you use the promo code GCPD50. But if you go after Friday when the sale ends, they still have great shirts that are currently on a limited run, so you can get a shirt that only you will probably have. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at what's going to happen to Batman without the GCPD working with him. Last time, the gang war began. Penguin versus Falcone. Batman would go get help from the GCPD, but Commissioner Gordon has been arrested for manslaughter. This whole thing is being orchestrated by someone, but the question is, who? The new Commissioner Forbes turns on the bat signal, and he listens to the newest police detective, Jason Bard, behind him. For the record, Commissioner, I'm against this. Duly noted, LT, once the sign on my door reads Bard and not Forbes, then someone might give a damn, but for now, this is my police force, not yours, not Jim Gordon's, and certainly not Batman's. It is then that we pan out to see the entire GCPD police force waiting. Let's get ready for him. It doesn't take long for Batman to arrive. Commissioner Forbes, you called, I came. We should talk. Your predecessor, Commissioner Gordon, and I had an understanding. James Gordon was a rotten cop with no respect for the law. You and I want the same things, to keep Gotham safe. I'm here to keep the criminals off the streets. I want them off the streets starting with you. And Forbes raises his hands to tell the units to fire. But Bard shouts out, D unit, fire! D unit is the smoke grenade unit, and the entire rooftop begins to fill up, allowing Batman to disarm everyone in the smoke. But once he moves through the smoke, Bard gets a perfect shot lined up with Batman's head, and he lowers his weapon. As Batman leaves the roof, Forbes smashes the bat signal, ending the GCPD's connection with Batman. Batman gets back to the Batcave where he turns to Alfred. I might still have some help on the GCPD, but I'm gonna go to Hong Kong. Falcone came back to Gotham for a reason, and I'm gonna find out why. As Batman leaves Gotham, Forbes gets picked up by the thugs of Falcone and brought to Falcone himself. It happened again, Forbes. I thought we had an arrangement. You promised to get a handle on the costume freaks in this town as a condition of your employment. Someone broke into my hideouts and got away with $375,000 of my money. Batman is a lot of things, but a thief, Forbes says shocked. Idiot, not Batman. I'm talking about Catwoman. I thought Batman was my priority. We put a scare into him. That's why he's not showing his face. Batman isn't afraid to show his face. If he isn't making trouble for me, then he's not in Gotham right now. Across the globe in Hong Kong, Batman is currently battling against ninjas with one of the many members of Batman Incorporated, Jiro. Jiro and Canary have been working with Batman to figure out what would make Falcone leave his gang war in Hong Kong and go back to Gotham. He was winning against Fang with the help of the Yakuza. With him gone, the Fang took over, so Jiro and Batman decide to pay the Fang a visit by going to the Fang's leader, only to walk right into the middle of somebody else already breaking in. The mysterious woman gets stabbed by Shen Fang, the leader of the Fang. And Batman begins to beat on the man, demanding to know how Fang suddenly won this war. And why did Falcone leave Hong Kong? At first, Shen Fang stands strong, but it doesn't take long for Batman to get his answers. Fang never won. Falcone was offered a buyout because, as he put it, he had unfinished business in Gotham. And someone told him it was time to come back. Batman finishes Shen Fang, and Jiro arrives just in time to ask Batman, Who's that woman? Once Batman gets into the Batplane, he looks up her name and he radios back to Alfred. I need the guest room prepared for a special guest. I'm bringing back Julia, Pennyworth, your daughter. Meanwhile, back in Gotham, Catwoman continues breaking into Falcone's hideouts, only to find a small army waiting for her behind one of the doors. He quickly subdues her and he hauls her off. Catwoman and Falcone have a history, so he intends to enjoy this and he ties her to a chair and he begins to torture her telling her that he intends to become Gotham's protector, the true champion that they need. 
But right beneath both of them, Professor Pig hasn't forgotten how Falcone screwed him over in our last video, and he's currently killing all of Falcone's thugs as he climbs up to his penthouse. Catwoman scoffs at Falcone. You'll never be a champion. We have Batman. And he throws her to the ground. Batman is nothing more than a protector of the costumed freak parade. He keeps the status quo. He's so much weaker than I was told. But that catches Catwoman's attention. What do you mean you were told? Falcone ignores her. I'm here to put the animals back in their cages. And that's the moment the Professor Pig arrives. Don't bet the farm on that Falcone! Yeah, yeah, yo! Meanwhile, on the other side of Gotham, Stephanie Brown is snuck into the library after hours where she does her research on a villain known as Clue Master. The man her father is claiming to be is nothing more than a D-list supervillain that has fought Batman a few odd times. Back with Professor Pig and Falcone, Pig has tied down Falcone and he's preparing to begin cutting and slicing him up. He'll make him better. Luckily, the hostage situation has made the news, and the GCPD have the building surrounded. So Batman comes crashing through the skylight, and he begins to beat some of the half-animal's heads in. He frees Catwoman as she begins to jump over, beating on the helpless Falcone, while Batman is busy with the thugs. He does manage to stop her, though, because he and her both need to leave before the GCPD storm this building. As Batman and Catwoman leave, she tells Batman what Falcone said. That someone told him this would happen. But the question is, once again, who is orchestrating this? Meanwhile, down in Brazil, Batgirl has tracked the man down that she believes is responsible for her father's incarceration. But it turns out to be just another patsy set up to distract her, and she fell for it. Luckily, Red Hood has been sent down by Batman to help her follow the trail and figure out who arranged all of this. But as she tells Red Hood, they need to hurry because they only have days before Gordon's sentencing. Back over at the Wayne Mansion, Julia Pennyworth wakes up and is groggy but grateful to be alive. But she's immediately furious when she sees her father. Alfred and his daughter haven't been in speaking terms for a long time because she just doesn't understand why a man that was once MI6 and worked for the Queen would give up his standing to go and work for some spoiled rich party boy. How could he leave her and her mother for this Wayne family, for the family that he chose? While this is going on, the gang war across Gotham rages on, with bullets flying all over from Falcone and Penguin. So Jason Bard rallies up the officers that he feels he can trust, which includes Harvey Bullock. He tells them that they need to take back this city, because it's starting to get out of hand. And for every place that Falcone shoots up, Penguin burns down one of his. But Bullock looks at Bard. The GCPD can't get involved. We're supposed to pretend that there isn't even a gang war thanks to the new commissioner. And Bard looks at him who said we're gonna stop the gang war. We need to stop Batman, don't we? Meanwhile, Red Robin is trying to figure out his own situation, which involves nanomachines infecting the brother of a girl he knows, Harper Rowe. He feels as though he can get some answers out of the recently incarcerated Professor Pig, but his computer informs him that Harper Rowe is currently hacking into the Bat Family computer network. How did she do that, he thinks to himself, as he heads back to Robin's nest. Back with the GCPD, Bullock uses the one method of contacting Batman that you never hear about, the bat phone. Batman arrives on a rooftop with Bullock and Bard standing there. What is he doing here? Batman asks Bullock, and Bullock explains that this was Bard's idea. He's just along for the ride. I have an idea how we can stop this gang war by the end of the week, but you just need to let us catch you, Batman. Back with Stephanie Brown, she gets a phone call from her roommate. You got a package, Stephanie. But Stephanie warns her not to open it. Something fishy is going on. Her roommate doesn't listen and opens it anyway to find a horse, one that is orange and blue. Steph thinks about it for a minute and simply says, it's a clue. But that's when her roommate follows up with another comment. This box is ticking, Steph. Instantly, the entire apartment explodes. Across Gotham, the entire GCPD strike team is watching as Batman enters a building. This is it, Bart shouts. We have Batman and his thugs cornered. They kick the door in and they aim their weapons at the gang members sitting there. One of the strike team members turns to Bard. Sir, these don't look like bat people to me. They don't, do they? That sure looks like a bat tattoo in that man's arm, implying that the mark that is actually the mark of the Falcone gang is actually Batman's gang symbol. The strike team member immediately gets what they're doing. <laughs> sir, yes sir, that is definitely the bat's mark. So the police haul off Falcone's thugs, and Batman appears in front of Bard. Your plan, I'm impressed. Well, it's not over yet. 
The next day, Forbes comes storming into the GCPD offices. What the hell do you think you're doing, Bard? I was arresting known accomplices of the vigilante Batman, sir. Do those men look like Robins or Nightbirds or whatever? Sir, they're all guilty of possession. I don't care, Bard. And that's when Vicky Vale steps up. Now that's a quote. Is it true, Commissioner Forbes, that you are not allowing these men to be arrested? Forbes is now backed into a corner, and Bard lets Vicky begin to grill him as he goes back to arresting Batman's accomplices. Meanwhile, at the Robin's Nest, Red Robin arrives and asks his computer where Harper Row is currently located. What he doesn't know is that she's actually hiding right behind him, in the nest. She traced his signal back to this location, but he does have other things to look into. So he decides that he'll talk to her once he gets back from Japan, as he loads up into the Robin jet. On the other side of Gotham, tears stream down Stephanie Brown's face as she looks from across the street at her burning apartment building. How could it go this far? She was just a simple girl. And on a computer screen watching her is her father, the Clue Master. Now there's one plot line that we haven't mentioned yet, the cursed hauntings at Arkham Asylum. Well, don't worry. It's still going on as Scarecrow is running from whatever is haunting the asylum. He is afraid, and whatever it is, pulls him through the wall. Back with the other gang, Penguin is furious that he's been forced into hiding by Falcone. He's worth $19 million. He shouldn't be hiding. But a rather interesting phone call comes over the wire. One that informs Penguin of Falcone's whereabouts. In his hideout, Falcone is screaming into a phone, demanding to know what is going on with the police. Who is this cop that is messing up their plans? And that's when he gets a knock at the door. He opens it to find all of his men dead. Penguin is standing there and he launches a knife into Falcone's hand, putting him to his knees with no guards to protect him. You disgusting little, oh, let's keep this dignified. Penguin stabs Falcone again. I'm what this city made me. I'm a creature of the now. Penguin takes his blade and he presses it against Falcone's neck, just as all of the lights come on. And there at the end of the hallway is the GCPD, led by Jason Bard and Vicky Vale. Bard arrests both men on multiple accounts of murder and attempted murder. And when they both try to argue that Forbes will have his head for this, he informs them that he had Forbes arrested that morning. Meanwhile, Red Robin is flying over the Pacific Ocean, looking at all of the news reports coming in. Hero cop Bard ends gang war overnight. Penguin's feathers plucked. Carmine Falcone directly tied to criminal empire. Well, that was one hell of a night to leave Gotham. And just then, his diagnostics check comes in, and it tells him that he has a passenger. In the cargo hold of his jet is Harper Rowe, eating cheese puffs. You have got to be kidding me! Back with Batman, he confronts Jason Bard on the rooftop of the GCPD. Because what he did was incredible. But at the same time, he was the one that sent Penguin to Falcone's location, and it cost 12 people their lives. But Bard tells him, I'm changing this city for the better, Batman, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. And I want you to do it with me, together. But as he turns around, Batman's already left. Lastly, we end this chapter by cutting back to Scarecrow to see what it is that he's truly afraid of in Arkham Asylum. Joker's daughter has him pinned to the ground, and she has a hatchet ready to slam into his face. The little bat boy and his ghostly friend are about to pay us a visit, and I can't have any distractions. So I'll just take care of you right now. After all, that's what my daddy told me. <laughs> but don't leave yet, folks. We still have so many plot lines to go through with this story arc. Batgirl and Red Hood are hunting down the one who set up her father. Gordon is about to be sentenced to jail time. Batwing and Spectre are about to start investigating Arkham Asylum. Also, will Alfred's daughter ever get her answers? Who is trying to arrange all of this against Batman? And how will we get to the ending where the city is burning down? Lastly, haven't you been wondering where Nightwing is? Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ComicStorian, and we'll see you next week at the next chapter of this insane, crazy, incomplete story.